Let's go over how to subtract fractions with mixed numbers. Let's start with something easy. If I have two and I want to subtract a half, how do we do that? So this two minus a half, well, you can't take a half from nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one, and then the denominator is a two. So I'm going to put a two over two. That's where the one went that I borrowed. Now we have more than enough. We have 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2, so that's 1 half, and then we have a 1. And you know that if you have 2 of something, and then somebody borrows a half of 1, how much do you have left? You have 1 whole and a half, and that's what we have here. Okay, so let's do one that's a little bit more challenging. Suppose I have a number like 3 and a third minus... 2 thirds. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the denominators match, and they do. Okay. So we're going to put 3 and a third here minus 2 thirds. Okay. So we're going to have to borrow because I can't take 2 thirds from 1 third. That just doesn't work. So just like when we borrow with whole numbers, I'm going to take 2. But then how we add that 1 here is we say whatever the denominator is, we have the same number top and bottom. Okay. Because this is a form of 1. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this problem. I'll write it over here. So this is the whole number 2. 3 plus 1 is 4, and the denominator is thirds. So this is this top line right there. Minus 2 thirds. Do you see now it's in a form that is easier for me to take a look at? Yeah, for me to work with. So they both, the denominators match. So we can just say 4 minus 2 is 2. Denominator is thirds, and then we drop the two down because there's nothing here. There was a one here that I'd subtracted. Okay, and there is my solution. Okay, let's try another one. Suppose I have a number like seven and five sixths minus a half. How do we deal with that? Okay, so first we notice the denominators don't match. So I'm going to have to scale up one or both. Okay, so I know that if I multiply by 3 over 3, 3 over 3 is 1, so I'm going to multiply 1 half by a clever form of 1 to scale it up so the bottom becomes a 6. So 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So this now becomes 3, 6. Okay, so let's rewrite the problem. 7 and 5, 6 minus 3, 6, okay? Denominators match, so I go 5 minus 3 is 2, 6, and we drop the 7. Okay, and if we want to reduce this, we can. I can divide the top and bottom by 2. I get 7 and 1 third is my final answer. Either of these is fine. It just depends on what your teacher prefers. Simplest form, or is it okay to leave it like that? Okay, let's do another problem so you're comfortable. All right. I have 4 and 7 eighths minus 2 thirds. Okay, so I'm going to have to scale both of these because 8 and 3, they don't have a greatest common factor. Okay, so I am going to scale up the 7 eighths here. I'll do it over here. 7 eighths, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3 over 3, so by this number. And then for 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 8. And that way I'll be sure to have one that works for both of them. 8 times 3 is 24. 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 8 is 24. Oh, good, the denominators are the same, right? And then 2 times 8 is 16. Okay, so let's rewrite this problem. This one is 16 over 24. This one is 21 over 24. I'm not borrowing. All I'm doing is scaling this up. You could do the same problem without the whole number, and it'd be the same procedure. Okay, now we're going to do 4. Let me rewrite the problem. 21 over 24 minus 16 over 24. Can we do the problem now? Absolutely. So this is a 4, and then 21 minus 16 is 5 over 24. And that is my final answer. Now, if your kids are stressed about learning fractions, then I'd like to invite you to register for my fractions class. It's free. 
You can register at getmath.net slash fractions.